In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host, favorite host, favorite host. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. All right, well, good evening, folks. This is Rick Robinson. This is America Off the Rails, and this is a special after the, the last and final State of the Union of Barack Obama, the Roundhouse mm-hmm. Edition. Um, and, and thanks for that great shout-out, Michael. Checks in the mail, brother. All right, so anyway, I have with me joined this evening in a Roundhouse Edition. We have the hosts of Game On and Bloody Marys and Broadsheets, um, one Mr. J.D. and one Miss Stacy. Good evening. How are you? State of the Very year. good. Thank Jeff you. Perry. <laughs> All right, and we are also joined by uh, the host of For Whom the Bell Tolls and also the host and co-host of Office Hours with Dr. A, one Miss Lou Bell and one Mr. Dr. Randy Arrington. Good evening, folks. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. So does this mean Rick's in charge? Aren't uh, I supposed to always be in charge? <laughs> 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 Rick, are you running this round table? 
<laughs> um, I kind of thought I would be because, you know, I'm usually the one that talks the least anyway when all you guys start yammering, so it makes more sense if I moderate. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Awesome. This is more like a rhombus table than a round table. Round table. Yeah, meet the press. It's like David Gregory and the ghost of, uh, uh, what the hell's his name? Uh, now his kid. Uh, you know, Russet. Yeah. Oh, I miss Tim Russert. So do I. But what are you going to One of the last of the breed, man. One of the yeah. Last... <laughs> what a, you know, that is such Oh, he didn't stuff. suck Not as bad as missing. they do now. Come on. Did you well, all feel... Okay, yeah, relative. You all feel, you all feel my radio pain now? Like, let's start the show by Stacy bringing up dead people that we missed. Oh, you brought him up. <laughs> you brought up dead people. What are you blaming Stacy for? Not the funny way. You Not said like... dead guy, Tim Russert. Dead guy, and then you took it to like throwing roses and jumping in on top of the coffin like some Polish peasant funeral. I'm and not now, Polish. You're Polish. <laughs> I'm gonna start moderating, Rick. <laughs> actually, I, I believe you actually said Tim Russet as if the guy would like a potato or something, but that's another mm -hmm. story. <laughs> yes, it's a potato. potato. Oh no, we know too many potatoes at this point. <laughs> Let's not talk about potatoes. Hey, Rick, when you run a round table, you got to take charge. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done with you guys. The next one of you that starts a shenanigans, I'm going to pistol whip you. Same. Oh, dude, you're begging for it. Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. <laughs> All right. Better than sad and tragic. So I... So... <clears throat> Does anybody hey, have... Hey, and we're past two minutes. Lou hasn't dropped an F-bomb. I know, JD was the first one to curse. We're past two minutes. This is Rick's best performance of the week. <laughs> easy. Wow. Easy on the boss. Right. Okay. Take it easy on the boss. I'm starting to think that JD doesn't really like me very much. Hey, 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 you really? Me? I kid, I kid. No, I mean, it's like every time we're together anymore, you just take every shot you can find, man. It's... I think after the Because he's gloom... used to co-hosting with me. Have you never listened to us? <laughs> okay, point taken. Anyway, I would Thank say you're hurting you. my feelings, but you'd have to have the feelings before what I What could... are you complaining about? I know men that pay $50 extra for that, so be grateful. <laughs> And hit the bell, Teddy. <laughs> another bell, dear. Bell. Yeah, I think you've earned another inappropriate bell. All right, so let's let's see if we can herd these cats in the right direction, shall we? So we're supposed to be talking about the State of the Union. Who wants to start? The Doom and Gloom Doctrine. I am so excited. You sound it. I mean, it's just all I apparent am. in you your voice why? and stuff. It's the last one. Well, A, it's the last one, and B, did you hear he's going to cure cancer? Oh, yeah, you know, mission not possible. <laughs> mission not like possible, it. and certainly not possible by a bloated, completely inefficient, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing government. Well, it doesn't but help that, that he put Crazy play. Uncle Joe in charge of it. His, yeah, that's oh. not really his play, though. His play was to announce it like it's his space program that so that if and when it does happen, if it happens here, he gets the credit. Thank you. There were two ways to look at what tonight was. As, as the last of what this narcissistic Michael Faith jerk-off had to do in a series of these, there was actually comments uh, 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 by the president within the last 72 hours. And he, he was like... He was like an old quarterback retiring in a playoff game or a Super Bowl. He's like, well, I want to stand there and take in when they say, you know, Mr. Speaker, and what it really means. And, and then this, this joke, this farce, this charlatan gets up there, gets up there. And honestly, to my mind, because he doesn't care, he didn't care in year one. And now this is just a big movie to him. We're closing out Act 3, and this was either, you can look at it one of two ways. It was either a, a, a Timothy Leary-type acid trip into the mind, heart, and soul of the progressive movement in the Democratic Party, or it was some pornographic money shot and just got his nonsense out of the way finally as far as State of the Union. That's what I took. <laughs> money shot? Uh-huh. Uh, well, that's one way to put it. That yeah, was I mean, a visual I didn't mean, Thanks, Jamie. everything that he could, yeah. <laughs> and he, he claimed victories where there were failures, like the VA and... Yeah. Oh, I know. Just, oh, God. Terrorism. But Lou, but Lou, that's the genius. <laughs> that, that, that's the genius. I, I mean, when you go back, mm -hmm. you go back to the term Pyrrhic victory. 
and you go back historically and, and you look at what that means and, and how politicians used to try and uh, uh, basically sell those to the public in the State of the Union, that's not what you have here. This is complete Lenny Riefenstahl, Joseph Goebbels type propaganda. Fed, yeah, to, totally. fed to clapping, clapping seals, waiting to have some fish smacked in their face or, or, or you know, what have you. Yeah, I mean, from the the cooked books and the fake numbers to, you know, the the I'm I'm gonna take the high road, but <laughs> I mean, every statement was followed by a but. America is great, but mm. you think you think you think his wife would have a big enough ass that the man could stop saying but every thirty. <laughs> <laughs> This wasn't a state of the union. This was a state of denial by Obama. Oh, absolutely, Tom. That's a great way to put it. He, he he basically he basically demagogued our, our fine men and women in the military. And you saw the look on those Joint Chiefs of Staff's faces. They know how for seven years Barack Obama has been doing nothing but systematically trying to dismantle our fine military. That should have showed you everything you need to know about what Barack Obama is. And always will be. And for those of you who don't know, Dr. Randy Arrington is a formal naval, naval aviator, baby, and, and more than well acquainted, acquainted with the military. And you want to know what, Randy? I actually had a thought I'd, I'd like your opinion on. He was so Machiavellian in how he used the military um, as props because when he spoke about climate change, you know, with, with all the fires the man's been able to start and all the disasters that are just popping off all around the world, you know, you, you, you kind of lose track of, of exactly what's going on. And when he was up there in the climate change and, you know, Republicans and you, you and five people in the cave and everybody else and all this other nonsense, he goes, well, if you don't, dis if you don't agree that climate change is, is, is as he posits it, then you disagree with our military. And this goes back to a civilian side study with the thumb on the scale that they got the imprimatur of the Pen excuse me, the Pentagon on, am I correct? Where at the end of the day there was some report that ended up coming out of it was the Pentagon or the Joint Chiefs that basically tied climate change to national security. And he will use the military when it suits him. But then just to the doctor's point, just bash, 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 bash. What are you kidding me with the money we spend? We gotta be shrinking the military more. I, I mean that's how I saw it, Doc. I don't know if you had the same take, different take. He does the same thing with the Constitution. They hate the Constitution, but they'll use the Constitution when it suits their narrative. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, just every everything to me sounded like a big old lecture on how to behave appropriately. He specifically said it was not political correctness, but the only people he was worried about in that speech, where is he like as he likes to say Muslims, not Muslims, Muslims. Oh, didn't Johnny Rockets over on our last network do the same thing? What the hell was his name? I don't know. Remember, remember Johnny Muslims? Johnny Muslims. <laughs> Yo, no, you 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 remember? Oh, we'll talk about this in the commercial break. I, I remember okay. the Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's just stop saying that. I lost a bet. I lost a bet tonight though because. He didn't use the phrase at that point, religion of peace. And I had actually bet that he was going to use the phrase religion of peace. So I, I lost that bet. But, you know, he he claimed that America was not, we, is not weaker. And, you know, I think that's crap. They took 10 of our sailors today over in Iran. Yeah, don't tell Iran. 10 don't of tell our Russia. sailors today over in Iran. <laughs> he didn't even mention it. We still have four hostages over there that we couldn't get out in the shadow of a huge arms deal. What? Everybody else got what they wanted and their people can travel freely, but we've still got four people in Iranian prisons. What don't tell what? me we have any global leverage. We don't. We, yeah, happened, we don't. What happened 48 hours before? They, and, and, and look, the story in this with the Iranians is not so much the seizing of the sailors, okay? I mean, they did that back in 2007, the story. The story is this administration saying keep the technology. 
because they're holding two fast boats from, from as I understand it, I, I think they were riverines, the doc can correct me if I'm wrong. And there is something patently wrong with this story. You have two patrol boats with 10 sailors on them, okay? And the administration and the media's line that I have heard without any questions or follow-up is one of them had engine trouble, drifted into Iranian waters, and now the boats and the crews are on the island of Farsi, and they're coming back. I want you to think about this for a second. These weren't battleships. These weren't destroyers. These were fast boats. These boats are made to move and made to boogie. There's a big gap in between one engine trouble on a, on, on a patrol boat with another one that's there that's effective. Forget about whether to be able to tow them out. They have armaments on the boats. So where's the follow-up question of two, you know, uh, unless, and I don't think this is right, Dr. Ray, last week the United States Navy says, hey, if anybody says, uh, stop and give us your boats and come with us, they do that. So where is the follow-up as to, one, were these boats and these sailors taken by force or under threat of force? And 48 hours prior to that, they were firing missiles 1,500 yards in front of one of our aircraft carriers in the Gulf. But we're going to we're going to give him 150 billion dollars. Cool. Yeah, well, I want to hear what Randy has to say about that. This actually. is the story is a lie. It's been concocted and uh, that's a good that's a very astute analysis of what was happening. I think it was 3 days ago that they were firing from their fast boats, those little unguided missiles. And they were firing them away from the carrier, but it was in the vicinity of that carrier. So this story is a lie, I guarantee you. Wow. It didn't it just didn't make sense to me. It just did not Makes sense to me. Well, and his follow-up didn't make sense either because he followed it up with a bunch of excuses about challenges in, in countries that are vying for the influence that we do have. And um, I'm sorry, Mr. Urkel, but def desperate nations are no more safe than non-desperate nations. I, and many times they're less safe. They're more of a risk when there are internal pressures. So... It, the start to finish, the whole thing was con concocted, including that when you get to the minute detail like that. Well, did you? But isn't the most disturbing part is this happened today in light of San Bernardino, in light of the word that we had two people arrested in Sacramento, one arrested in Texas, in light of the fact we've had terrorist attacks in Istanbul today in a large tourist area, huge mm -hmm. attack in Paris. We now have Iran basically, you know, jimmying up there and saying, oh, we're going to shoot these missiles over here just to see what happens. Uh, now maybe we'll just take these boats and see what happens. They are so testing us to see what we will do and what is too far to push us in the midst of all this other chaotic uncertainty. And the leader of our country got up to address the nation today and did not mention it. They are yep. not looking and to see how far they can push us. They already know how far they can push us. What they are trying to see if they can, is if they can literally get the United States military or at least the foreign policy apparatus of this country to publicly capitulate within the next 12 months. And I think regardless that their actions qualify as measures short of war, don't they, Dr. Arrington? And on that, and geopolitically, it's a, it's a huge thing as far as how we react to it and uh, what our geopolitical standing is. Well, what's well, besides Klaus, what, the, what's the Ali Klaus Khamenei is laughing at us, uh, Vladimir Putin is laughing at us. He said in his speech that we are more respected internationally since he took office. Nothing can be further from the truth. We and his leadership are nothing but an international joke, and they know it. And his vice president out of the campaign trail told the nation that. They, he said if you elect Barack Obama, he will not be able to handle those foreign crisis situations that will happen on his watch. He was so correct. Well, That's no, the I mean, last time Let's, let's right. stop and think for a second. If those two boats belong to Russia and those were 10 Russian personnel – what do you think Putin would be doing? Exactly. He'd, have nuked him by now. He would, he'd, he'd be calling you know, the people in, in Tehran saying, you got one hour to let, release those people. Fill them up full of gas. Let those guys go. Or I'm coming in, and I'm going to carpet bomb you in Tehran. That's what I would do as vice president. And that's what Ronald Reagan, they knew he would do that when they had the hostages uh, for the 365 Thank days in, in Tehran. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because the, how I was seeing this, when, when Lou was speaking about, well, is this formally you know, a state-sponsored act of war? Does it rise to that occasion? I think that what we do when we ask that question is we apply a historical context to it when you can't. Because this is happening in the moment. And what it reminded me of, Lou, as soon as you said it, was Carl von Clausewitz. Actually, actually, what I said was it qualified technically as a measure short of war, which is something that um, on a global diplomatic and, and geopolitical stage is technically something that you can respond to. And the rest of the world goes, oh, well, yeah, you had a right to respond to that. No, I, un- I, I understand and I take your point. But my point was what popped into my mind was the famous von Clausewitz, von Clausewitz quote on war. And for those of you who don't know who he is, um, he was a Polish-born general back in the, I think, about mid-19th century. And it, it, it's one of the, 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 the better quotes that I've seen on war. And I wanted to tie it into Lou's point. And von Clausewitz says, war is the continuation of politics by other means. If the leader is filled with high ambition, if he pursues his aims with audacity and strength of will, he will reach them in spite of all obstacles. Everything in war is very simple, but the simplest thing is difficult. And I now want to take Lou's point, and I want to go back to the question that was asked here about, well, what would happen if these were Russian or if these were Vladimir Putin that this happened to? And the definition of how a nation state looks at war or what actions rise to being, uh, and, and Doc, I'd be interested in your point on this, what, what, what would rise to being war is defined by the politicians at the time, to a most part, to Van Clausewitz's point, because it's a continuation of the inability to be able to solve it with diplomacy and politics. That's right. That was exactly my point, J.D. Well, that doesn't make for good radio, Lou. Go <laughs> Sorry. Agree. Jesus, God. Well, I mean, the one thing that we got to thank that Ricky Tiggy Tommy Rick Robinson is the K98 News crew. We gave them off tonight because the state of the state of the union is like it, it, it's like beating off with a sock on your hand. It's awful. So what we did is we were able to hook up in the pool with NBC News and Andrea Mitchell. Andrea Mitchell, because when that when, when when the pretext of the speech uh, the speech came out, there was no mention of of the ten sailors. So Andrea Mitchell was able to get in right as the president was walking into the chamber and ask him about um, the, the, uh, the boats being taken and the 10 sailors. And this was Obama's response. Did I do that? And that's all we got. <laughs> well, I mean, let's face it. Um, the majority of his speech actually sounded like Urkel all grown up. I mean, it's, it's one of the things that I tweeted about uh, over and over again. It was like all of his failed policies laid out in the guise of being victory laps. I mean, it's like Lou said it earlier, he went... And touted being able to take better care of our, our medical men and our military men and women medically, including our veterans, which we all know is a lie. Um, best job numbers in forever, which we all know is a lie. Um, best unemployment numbers in forever, which we all know is a lie. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it just seemed like every time you, you were listening to him, if you were watching on TV, you just kept waiting for his nose to grow, and it just. I don't know. And you and I talked about it off off air, and I'm like, this guy is the biggest liar ever. And something that you pointed out to me that I'd never really thought about before is the fact that he actually probably believes everything that he just said. That's well, that's it. what you saw tonight. That That is what you saw tonight. And, and, and that's why that's why I think that, 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 that people almost give Obama too much credit on the political side. Tonight was not a master stroke of taking the, the, the Democratic Party into the 21st century and, and, and leading them into a victory in the end of 2016. Tonight was an open-door walkthrough of the worldview of Barack Hussein Obama. And now, as we sit here in 2016, the majority of the progressive movement and the Democratic Party. You know, one of the biggest things that I liked that he said tonight was, I'm looking ahead to the next five, nine, or ten years. I'm thinking, me too, because you're only going to be involved in one of those. Not if I just amend the Constitution unilaterally, impose martial law, and just sit here. You know, this is a nicer house than I bought from Tony Resco. You don't know about Tony Resco. Tony Resco's in jail, but the media won't tell you that. You want to know why? I bought a house for about $5, Mrs. Cow, and four magic beans. This guy is such a scumbag, I can't take it. Oh, by the way, this was... uh, this was Nikki Haley's response right after the State of the Union. You're a liar! <laughs> you're not telling us, you slimy, scumbag liar! 
And that is a point that I need to make. Can we all take a vote here of as to whether or not we should kill what, not through the fault of the person giving it, but just the follow-up from the pomp that you get as a president of the United States with a joint session of Congress, all the, the, the well, most of the Supreme Court, the, the Joint Chiefs, and on and on, and then the, the, the uh, uh, what was that, um, the, uh, the, the, the Stepford Wife hostage video that has to occur after it. Because the optics of it, to my mind, are so bad, I don't know if anybody gets the message. There's three years. Somebody could say something. Did, did you hear he said his one regret was he couldn't bring the politicians inside the Beltway, those Beltway bandits, as I call them, together in a more bipartisan fashion. Uh, just trust me on this one subject. You cannot cooperate with politicians who are trying to destroy traditional American values. You can't do it. You must fight them tooth and nail, and that's what they should be doing. We don't have enough people doing that because of being bribed or blackmailed. That's what's happening inside the Beltway. Yeah. It, no comment, I, To me, yeah, no, to me it was, it was like listening to Mr. Nasty tell you to be nice. Mr. Right? Nasty. Yeah, I mean, and then, and, and then the community organizer explained, you know, extreme voices and interest group politics. Is that like so, a voices? Yeah, it's at least that many. And I was thinking, project much, dude. Well, when you said it. when you said Mr. Nasty, I'm just picturing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should have known that was coming. Yeah, Mr. Nasty. Hey, Michelle, tells you. Come here and show you my joint. <laughs> Suck it, Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Mr. Mr. Nasty. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. I see you and Paul Ryan sitting behind me. You want to, uh... Giggity, 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 giggity. Let's have sex. That's right. This is my last one. I'm taking it out right here, bitches. Just swinging it around. Everybody back up in the chamber. Back up. Barack, swinging it, baby. I'm swinging it. What a jerk. <laughs> Whatever. Everybody knows Michelle's is bigger. Ugh. Uh, no, you didn't. Oh, listen. When your kids can sleep under the tent of your mother's morning wood, it's gross. <laughs> JD, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you did. I heard him. <gasps> Doctor oh, on the cusp of becoming a senator, and the night before the vote, and this show comes out. My poor man. <laughs> my poor man. Yeah. So, um. Anyway, oh. I love late night radio. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, he didn't miss the opportunity to scold Republicans about the rancor in their ranks. No, well, it, he, 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 sorry, Stacey, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, I was listening a little bit to the post debate and post response uh, coverage before I came up to, to get on the air and Krauthammer um, and, and, and company, and I believe it was Stephen Hayes who actually said, you know, Obama talked about being gracious, being, you know, um, team oriented, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Civilian. It was actually Nikki Haley who demonstrated how to be gracious during her talk. You know, she did actually have nice things to say at the beginning of her speech. She didn't, you know, and during the course of her speech, she said, Sure. Does some of the blame fall on Democrats, you know, for some of the problems we face today in terms of foreign policy, da, 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 and the things that really the Obama administration has almost total control over? Of course. But there's also some things we in our own party need to take an inward look towards and how can we do this better or different? And I think that um, the contrast between those two speeches was immense. Yeah. When Nikki Haley was talking, I felt like I was being spoken to. When Barack Obama was talking, I felt like I was being lectured at. Yeah. But but that's the that that is the difference. And and, and go back and contrast. And, you know, and, and look at W's. Uh, look at his father's. Look at Reagan's. You know, you go look at those at those state of the uh, of the union speeches. Basically, you know, whether you're ideologically aligned with them or not, they found common 
uh, yes, I mean, they're politicians, so they were political points and all of them. But they found these common binding things to bring the country together. And the left looks at it differently. Tonight, to my mind, was a version of a Paul Wellstone memorial where it was just a big, we gonna, we gonna, and let's pull the wool over their eyes, and Barack was possessed. He was up there in the church of the BS, and he wanted to tell everybody, don't read the news and listen to your crazy uncle that listens to Fox and all this other garbage. I, I mean, it really was. It, it was it was a Wellstone memorial. I, I mean, half of the left and the Democrats in the chambers, you know, they, they had to have towels on their seats. They were getting so sopped up between the, uh, you know, about it, yeah, except for Bernie Sanders. That was just because they were out of defense. But they, they you know, you know, it, 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 it just, they, you know, oh, oh, it, orgasmically preening at this jerk off. It just, it kills me. And, and honestly, that is the look into the future of a lower and lower and lower and lower voter informed society. I've been saying it for a long time. These people are not so much George Orwell in 1984 as they are all this Huxley and brave new world. Did you hear that he took a shot at us too? The uh, citizens, he said the democracy can't, uh, that can't succeed unless the citizens cooperate. He was taking a shot at us. And what has he done for seven years? Foment chaos amongst the citizenry by installing Muslim Brotherhood people into high levels in every bureaucracy in the federal government, by uh, inciting Black Lives Matters and the Black Panthers and, and everybody else out there that wants to um, create chaos in the United States. And yet he chastises us in the State of the Union, saying we have to cooperate as citizens. That's how a democracy succeeds. He doesn't know a democracy from a good grade of peanut butter, trust me. Thank you. And when you start speaking about citizen cooperation, you know what pops into my mind? Because how do you make sure everybody's cooperating? You need a list. It always starts with lists. It always starts with List. I'm not going Alex Jones and tinfoil hat and saying before you go to bed tonight, they're kicking in the door, maybe in some places, but it always start with the list. And when I hear about citizen cooperation, that just screams collective and pravda and da. But I Correct. will tell you something. This, <laughs> the one thing that Obama has been great for, Obama has been radio gold and he's been a great muse. And he completely, he moved me to write a song that we did on the last State of the Union. Um, would you all like to hear it? Sure, why not? And then we got to take a break. All right, all right, all right, all right. This is, this is Barack Obama playing Muse to Jig Dick. But one thing that I wanted to share with, um, with everybody before we get into, you know, kind of the minutia and the, the more serious part of it um, there's a person that I respect greatly down in the Mississippi Delta. And um, his name is Blind Mississippi White Boy Pig Feast for Free Baby. And he's a great blues man come out of the Delta that doesn't give me so much inspiration I can't tell you. And old my white boy inspired me today as I was wasting my time to write a little blues song about Obama and what him and his State of the Union has done to me today. I'm so sick of Obama, or he does is waste my time. Six years into this nightmare, and he's still coming for more of mine. I done paid what I owe you, will you just please go away? Obama done took all my nickels, and all he do is laugh and play. I'm getting tired of all his needing, while my pockets they be bleeding, while people on food stamps my taxes be feeding. His calls I have stopped heeding. I got the Obama, please just go away, blah hoos. He's been hell on the country, but he's been great for radio. <laughs> very nice, very nice. All right, folks. Well, we have hit the bottom of the hour. We've got to take a quick break. I want to give a shout out to everybody hanging out in the chat. Uh, you guys have made some comments that I think we'll get to when we get back from the break. But at this point, we've got to pay some bills. This is Rick Robinson. I'm the host of America Off the Rails. We'll be right back with the uh, Roundhouse Edition State of the Union 2016. 
Alright folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialist. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialist today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405 703 31796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. The wrong way. Welcome to the All right, guys, we're ready for our Four Seasons sunroom, and Daddy's going to get a rec room with refreshments. Oh, no, we'll be sleeping under the stars. Mom, what about the one with, you know, the fun? Nice try, little bro. It's a gym, my gym. Hey, Grandma's getting her Four Seasons garden room, weather tight and still like being outdoors. Maybe a living room. Oh, no, wait, a family hub. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what the budget, the season, or the climate, Four Seasons Sunrooms let you and your family enjoy the outdoors inside. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation brochure from the premier manufacturer of sunrooms since 1975. More reasons for Four Seasons now. To find out more, call toll-free 800-928-7007. That's 800-928-7007. Call 800-928-7007 today. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it there to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. Alright folks, we're back, we're live, this is America Off the Rails, I'm your host Rick Robinson, this is the Roundhouse Edition, special edition for State of the Union 2016. Sometimes I, I'm glad that you guys can't hear what goes on during the commercial breaks, but other times I wish you could come <laughs> along for the ride. Anyway, so we are back, we are live, and still got about 20 minutes of the show left, we ran a little long in the last segment. <clears throat> All right, so anybody want to lead off for the remainder? Okay, terrific. 
had, yeah, Jim, we were getting the, the economic numbers were startlingly, hilariously false. Oh, you didn't get you 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 didn't get your brand new Lamborghini with your million dollar check with your tax returns last year. From his, speaking from his, his, speaking his, of those economic numbers, the thing that kept burning through my head with those economic numbers, you know, and all the different things that he was talking about that everybody knows are blatantly false. There's been a meme going around for the last several days that's talking about with this upcoming lotto what the share would be for like every American if they would just evenly divide up the money, and it's some crazy number like four point three million dollars. It's four dollars. It's four dollars and thirty. Three cents. Yeah, like four bucks. Yeah. I mean, it, well, well. Here's, the, it, but this, this is what, equ- this is why it equates back to the same stuff that he was talking about. Do you know how many people have believed that? And here's the thing: that is still wrong. Even if you do the math, and it's four dollars and thirty-three cents, you didn't take into account the fact that the government's going to take forty percent off the top, an average of at least another eight percent based on what state you live in. So you're going to get enough to buy another ticket and try again. Let me forgive. Let me forgive anybody who did think that, though. As, as funny as I laughed at it today, I have to make a complete JD confession. So today in that uh, in JD's business, baby, we were, we, we were moving and shaking, and um, and a client had come back to me, and <laughs> basically he took two hundred British pounds, and the metric and the units were two hundred and thirty, right? So it was two hundred British pounds per. And I looked at it real quick, knowing I'd have to go back to it a few hours later in U.S. time. And I went, great. That's about 460,000 British pounds. Just, well, that's about 600 grand. Okay, great. Da, 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 da. Went back to it a few later, working off the premise of 600,000 U.S. dollars. And then went, wait, wait a minute, that's 46, oh, that's 70 grand. <laughs> I swear to God. It is comic for now. I had to admit it. Listen, I'd be lying if I did. I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't. I did one of those today, although I did know it was four dollars on the lotto. Um, I'm wondering if there's anybody in the chat room or a listening audience out there that actually believes the science is settled on climate change, whatever you, whatever moniker you want to give to it, and if that is the number one national security threat that's confronting our country. I wonder if anybody believes that, except for the people that believe Barack Obama is the Messiah. Did you see some of the looks on those? people's faces on the left when he came into the room. They looked at him like he was Jesus Christ himself. And there are people out there in our population who will believe anything this man or Mrs. Clinton will say because they're that mind-raped. And that's a big problem, J.D., for this country. There are people that believe this crap. Yeah, well, I mean, my, Doc, mind raped, mind raped is the perfect way to say it because I'll, I'll change the name of the phrase in case Rick wants to put this up on NJC. But every one of those Stepford morons walked in there with their orgasm face on. I mean, every time the guy spoke, that ah, you know, I mean, the only other, the only other people who got to see the faces the way they were contorted in that room were probably those people's partners. I mean, that's the kind of cult of nonsense that you're dealing with around this. And you're exactly right, Doc. And what you have is you have, and this goes so far back into the Alinsky model. It's divide. It's conquer. It's top up, bottom down, inside out. So the dumber and, 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 and more... Uh, cultish that 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 you have these people following the boy king it drives the other people in the country who disagree with it to have more visceral reaction against the demigod and that's where we find ourselves in january 2016 in my opinion well that's why i always say pity the people that need heroes and on our last show office hours dr a we talked about some of the unsung unheralded heroes in our country and uh, it's it's our women and our women are heroes we need to recognize them as such, and they, their voices are needed more, now more than ever to save this country from going over the cliff. And they are heroes. They don't want to be thought, thought of as heroes, but pity the people, J.D., that need heroes because they concoct heroes that are false heroes. Yeah, I, I do, and I, and I think that that has been, I think that that has been a lot of the appeal to people of Donald Trump in the Republican primary. Because when you have a demigod and when you have a boy king, not everybody in the village can take them down. They're beaten down by them. They're tired of them. And the village elders all get around, and I'll call the other candidates, they're the village elders. And they are rationally trying to tell the villagers, 
no, 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 no. We can't rush in and do this right now. Well, we have to be able to defeat the boy king and the demagogue, and this is how we're going to do it with the plan. And they're probably right. But you know what? When that generational guy, that six foot six uh, a warrior king comes in and goes, we're going to kick the front door in and you're all coming behind me and we're going to kill the demagogue and the boy king and all the villagers go, yeah, and all the elders go, well, we can do this without 90% of you getting killed. Ah, da, 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 and they go. But it is this kind of environment, I think, that lends an appeal to what Trump is selling because <clears throat> I've said it before in the past on the show. With things that I might disagree with about Donald Trump, I'll tell you one thing. Before Donald Trump ever came on the scene, I made the point of our candidates, they don't know how to politic. He does. He understands that this man, for those who are, for people who are sick of Obama, to the doctor's point, Obama is a villain. He is a mustache-twisting, old cartoon bomb-carrying, big stovepipe hat-wearing villain. Yes, Wilson Squirrel, da. And, and I think that's part of the visceral appeal of kicking down the door of the kingdom of the boy king and just setting it aflame. I agree with that. And by the way, Miss Daisy, I'm not the one that mentioned Donald Trump, but can you remember back when Eric Holder departed the Attorney General's office, the, the world celebration, or at least the United States celebration for that man who's basically nothing but a failed act, communist activist? Can you imagine, J.D. and Stacey and Lou and Rick, what the celebratory uh, uh, atmosphere is going to be like around this country when next January comes rolling around and he leaves the White House? It'll be like nothing you've ever seen, and it'll be nothing but, but trumped up phony admiration for this supposed hero. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the thing that kills me, the thing that kills me about Obama you take George W. Bush, right? And, and, and look, everybody's got their own opinions about W., but what I'm speaking to specifically is how W. carried himself post-presidency. Maybe he doesn't like Jeb. I mean, look, I, we never like Jeb. Jeb's a, Jeb's a jerk-off. Jeb's, Jeb's a jerk-off from the, from the word go. I mean, Stacey and I have been telling everybody to, to, to stay out the bushes since, since this guy started running for president. But I look and I see his brother doesn't, you know... He, he won't comment because he has enough respect for the office uh, uh, of the presidency. Um, but Obama is, is, is the complete opposite. I mean, he's George W. Bush's 180-degree bizarro world doppelganger. He is a youngish man who, in his last State of the Union address, couldn't help literally beating on Republicans and presidential candidates by name. He's not going anywhere. He's going to be very vocal and I honestly think that once he's out of the White House stock, he's going to be doing it from a different address. But because the press just soaked their shorts over this guy, he is going to be in our face as much post-presidency as he is right now. If he gets elected, I'm sure that um, doesn't make Stacey really happy to contemplate that. Uh, I think he's going to wield power, like you, you said. He does understand power and, and deal-making. But he, I think, is also going to try to heal the country. He's going to go back and he's going to grab some of these people. I think Mrs. Clinton will be indicted within a couple of months. But he's going to go back and grab some of these people that are basically traitors to this country uh, and, and, and the United States of America. And he's going to make sure that they come to justice. And that is something that they fear uh, inside the Beltway more than anything with related to uh, Donald Trump. And I, I think it's going to be healthy. What is the everybody's truth will come take? Out, JD. The truth on, will come out eventually. What is everybody's take on the possibility of Kankles being indicted during this election cycle? You know how I feel. Within 60 days or less, Clinton will be indicted. I feel stronger about it. I always used to think it was a pipe dream. I think it's more of a possibility. Rick, Stacy, Lou? Well, what kind of made me think um, something might be going on is there was an interesting quote from Joe Biden that was all over the place today that he had learned to never to say no when he was asked if he was out of the race for 216. Yeah. I, t I told you that when he that said that. That kind of makes said, me go, He's going to prove to be one of the smartest guys ever because he'll jump in and, and have not spent four months worth of money or going around the country. When she gets indicted and they throw her out, he'll swallow all sin. He'll be... Uh, drafted by the party and come in and he'll be the smartest guy on the planet, at least for that decision. You know, I know FBI, I, I know FBI agents, you know, I, I, I know some here and there, but what I don't, what I don't have contact with and, and what I don't know is I don't, 
Um, I don't have any high up, um, whether you want to call it leadership, whether you want to call it management, the, you know, the inner circle of the professional FBI. And at least from the line agents that I've spoken to, and I don't know if this differs because, you know, <coughs> I mean, you were in the military, Doc. The guys that, that I'm friends with who are feds tell me the same that guys I'm friends with who are in the military. That if you want to be, you know, the easiest thing to put in everybody's mind is a general rank. You know, if you want to rise to a certain level in the service, at some point or level, you also have to become somewhat political in, in order to do that. And I do know that at least from anecdotal one-off conversations I've had with line agents, they're saying the morale of it is, is that people who, and again, you know, the entire FBI doesn't know what's going on, but the scuttlebutt and the stuff that's running through the, the, um, the Bureau right now is that there would be open mutiny if the, line agents ever, if the line agents ever got to see what's been gathered so far and there wasn't an indictment. And I wonder if there's a disconnect that doesn't happen as that goes up the chain. I, I don't think so. Not with James Comey at the top. And I do have some top-level FBI uh, people that are still there from, from my time in the federal government. And they're telling me, Randy, there is a locked, shut case on this woman. There is more evidence there are probably 50 or more counts that they can get on this woman, and they'll throw her away for the rest of her life. She's nothing but an evil, poisonous, criminal woman. And pe people have to understand that. We're telling you the truth. You, may know, you, you want to stand your ignorant stupor and think she's just like Barack Obama, the, the next messiah. Fine. We can't get to you. We can't train you. Go ahead and keep your head in the sand. But I'm telling you, this woman, there's more evidence against her than ever against General Petraeus or any of the other people, against the Rosenbergs. She is going to be indicted, Miss Stacy. Well, if Hillary, if Hillary goes to jail, she'll finally have an opportunity to go an entire year having sex with more women than Bill. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We have like eight minutes till J.D. turns into a pumpkin. <laughs> I think it might already be too late. Yeah. Stacy, what are your thoughts of her getting indicted? Are you feeling more and more like she will be? Um, her responses yesterday to to the questions about the investigation and saying it was not true, it was completely fabricated when gosh golly gee, an awful lot of reputable news organizations have come out with the same story. Something's going on. Um, yeah. and she is clearly not, um, well, you know, woman to woman, she's not sleeping cause she looked terrible. And, uh, the other pieces, she's not comfortable with the question. So she knows something's going on. I love it when they go woman to woman and they ain't sleeping, baby. Stop. <laughs> she is a pathological liar just like your, your president Barack Obama is a pathological liar I can insult her looks because I'm another woman so you're apparently that's okay you all truth. are misogynist, misogynist pigs if you do that oh you know what screw that I'm an awful human being at my heart and soul she's a piano well, leg I'm well aware of that she, she, she had a child as a political prop she's a piano leg thief I mean that, that, uh, that's about the nicest thing that you could call this walking sandal barren desert of a hoo ha that 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 is trying to ascend to the highest office in the land. Don't hold back, JD. Tell us how you really feel. She's a disgraceful human being. Her and the other idiot. You know they they you know you got you got you got jerk off McGillicuddy running around with billionaire midget porno you know underage prostitute island and all that 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 nonsense. I, I mean she is a walking scandal. You have to understand something. The media jokes and laughs about the fact that she has a bag man. Her bag man's name is Uma Abedin. If anybody wonders, Uma Abedin isn't the one who knows where all the bodies are buried. Let me remind you that her husband was the guy who sent his schmeckle all over Twitter and the inter interwebs. Okay? That'd get you fired from being the manager of your local McDonald's. This woman is dug deep as a tick up the fat ass of Hillary Clinton. Walking into the White House if she gets elected, to God knows how to, to, to guide her through and shepherd and bury the other damn bodies. You're right. And uh, I, I keep saying this that Mrs. Clinton cannot be cured by any known pharmaceutical, psychological, or beads and rattles remedy. She cannot be cured. She, 
I know she she knows she's lying, JD. She knows she's she's lying to the American people, but she is so invested in those that deception, she can't stop lying. Well, you don't, you know, when you when you <laughs> and then again, it's it's talking to the villagers. It's okay if she lies to us because we are just props. Her daughter's a prop. They had a child as a political prop. They had a marriage as a political prop. And you know what it got her? It got her elected to the Senate in the state of New York, and it got her to be appointed Secretary of State. And right now it has her running for the highest office in the land. They use props as people. So don't think for a second they're not talking to us like a bunch of brain-dead props ourselves who we, they just need to, I'm telling you, you know, her and Obama and the rest of these idiots, it goes back to the Saddam Hussein quote shortly after he had, he had seized power in Iraq. And uh, correct me on this, what is, Iraq, Iraq's a country of what, 75 million? Roughly. Something like that. And, and, and I, I'll never so, forget, yeah. this was one of the quotes, it was him and the, the, the family and the regime and who was ever going to live off the fat of his dictatorship. And he's like, Iraq is a country of 75 million. Too bad we only need 5 million to run it. And Hillary Clinton thinks the same exact way. Hey, Lou, what are your thoughts on Mrs. Clinton? My thoughts on Mrs. Clinton are, uh, yes. you know, I kind of have mixed feelings. I think she should be indicted. I kind of think she won't be indicted. But then I think she's so beatable because she's so damaged. So you I have mixed feelings. You said beatable. It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. <laughs> That's so, a pretty bold stance, Lou. You're disagreeing with Dr. A and J.D. That's pretty bold of you. So uh, <laughs> Slick would like to add his two cents into the uh, conversation. Um, his exact words were, she's a bullet magnet, just saying. <laughs> oh, Joe is a Pepsi bottle floating in the lake compared to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I really do. I now, do. Ron, he said Lou is wise. Ron knows what he's talking about. Well, I mean, and and I have to kind of agree with Lou. I think she should be indicted, but in this both widely inept and corrupt administration, I just don't see it happening. I don't know, and I and I think that comes down to how much power Loretta Lynch has at the end of the day as the as the head of the the, the uh, Department of Justice and the FBI, basically, you know. Um, to quash what comes out of there. That, that I just don't know. Although I'll tell you, it would be a big soul sell for her because as much as she's been a half a disappointment, you know, when she was the, the AG for the, the Southern District of New York, Loretta Lynch was a very serious prosecutor. She wasn't that much of a political animal. I mean, she has to be in this position, so I think it'll be interesting to see where this shakes out. All right, so any final thoughts? We're down to about a minute. Final thoughts from you, Stacey? Papa sucks. Say goodnight, Stacey. Night, Stacey. Are we, has somebody got the keys? You <laughs> tossed me the keys. Dang, everybody's trying to get out of here tonight. <laughs> oh, did, did I keep everybody up past their bedtime? Park is this cold? It must be date night. Sir, shrimp and shrimp and grits and sea bass. Giggity, 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 giggity. Let's have sex. Come on. <laughs> All right, folks. That's going to do it for this particular episode of America Off the Rails. This has been a special roundhouse edition with the State of the Union 2016. With J.D., Stacy, Lou, and Dr. Arrington, all hosts here on K98 Talk on the Spark Radio Network. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your night, and hope you uh, followed our advice and didn't tune in so we could do it for you. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Game over, man. It's game over.